Hello everybody and welcome once again to Danny Anderson's Real Tech Mod Pack. This episode we're going to have a look at some changes to a couple of mods. Magnetic Craft and Moore's Boats. First of all I'd like to look at Moore's Boats. So let's start with that shall we. So a couple of new things in here. One of them is this. The Cargo Stopper. This is basically, the, it was the same as the Waterborne Comparator except this was actually buggy. What this was doing was sending the redstone signal in all directions and it's not supposed to and this one is supposed to send the, the redstone signal in one direction uh in all directions sorry <laughs> right and this one's new as well paddles so you can get um uh, you can make some paddles so you can put those in the boat and just paddle away in case you run out of power which of course is uh great um i think that's basically it for those i'm not sure what those yeah these are just little bits of items which don't really exist so let's go and have a look at over where my ship is and um, see what we've got over there I've actually set up there's a couple of more fixes as well so I'll see you in a few seconds right here we are and I put a boat beside this with some some cobblestone and take the cobblestone out this goes out but you can see that the um, redstone signals are in all directions um, let's move this boat along a little bit here I should also put back the um, cobblestone in there to get a, a bit of a mount here I'll move it a little bit further on and then that will turn on so this time you only get the redstone signal from the water one comparator going in that direction as you would expect it to do which is great now the other thing that was actually that's going to be a potential problem was if the boat is full and here's a hop one thing in it let's just fill up the boat and see if what happens i need to put a motor in this boat as well i'll be back in a second with some more cobblestone so right i've got a chest full of cobblestone let's just take out as much as we can for this time being and put as much as we can into this boat as well so let's just load it up um oh it's unloading of course because <laughs> i'm out by the unloading station let's just move it a little bit further along so it doesn't unload here and of course this is also a bit on the slow side now this probably getting loaded up with cobblestone can i get to this thing yes turn can <laughs> right so now we can load it up with some co cobblestone in there can't shift click it in unfortunately and let's put a little bit more cobblestone into this i basically want to fill it up and show you what happens Still more, another four, five stacks with a bit of luck. I've only got four, <laughs> oh no, I've got five, that's fine. So we can put these into here and fill up the boat. Or we'll almost fill it up, let's fill it up as much as we can. Like that, so we've got uh, those, let's take 32 out of here and put the rest of these into the into this hopper over here like this. So we've got another 64. <clears throat> now one of the potential problems here is it's going to turn on the redstone signal here and stop the boat. That is off, isn't it? No, that is off now. So the boat will stop here. So let's just get it powered, and so it can actually will run. So let's put in here the um, solar panel, and daylight sensor, which becomes its solar panel, and unlock this like that. So now it's going to fill up. And one of the potential problems is it's going to stay there forever because this is got filling up here slowly. I think you might have sped that up a little bit. And let's get to the boat and have a look at the boat if I can. <laughs> it's hard. So it's now got it's now got a 32 and um, left in here and it's not going down. So that means the boat's full. Now the boat should simply now move as it does. So when it's got full now, the the redstone it will ignore the redstone signal from here and then carry on. Otherwise, of course, what would happen is you'd end up with um, <coughs> a boat was we stuck there forever. So that's fixed as well. So great fix. Thank you very much for that. Um, let's just turn this off again. We don't need that. I can leave it here. There's another trick as well. I think my boat is stuck because I haven't seen it around here for a while. Um, it's been since I've done this. And I'm not also sh sure if you've seen the heads up display from the um, jet boots. But the boat is over here somewhere. So let's have a quick look at that. I saw it going in and it should have a chunk loader on the boat. But, of course, there's a slight problem with the chunk loader on the boat. What happens is, um, if the if the boat gets into ice, then the chunk, you can only have one or the other. 
Where's he gone to? There it is. And what I've done <laughs> is I put the junk loader on another boat behind it. So you can see like this. And it, they're tied together with oops, with the tied together with the rope. You can, maybe you can see that like that. I'm not sure if it's working perfectly, but it seems to be mostly the time okay. But when I go away, I think the it gets unloaded. I think they really do have to be on the same thing. But on the front boat, what I've done is I've put some um, uh, an icebreaker, so you can see the icebreaker. So it, if it hits in the ice, it's going to fix that. Now, one thing we haven't looked at is the icebreaker has also been fixed. Earlier on, it didn't. It wouldn't break the. F all of the spaces it in front of it, it and they're freezing up so fast that they actually was getting stuck but now i believe the area has been extended so this will actually work better so let's have a look flying back to base i think yeah there it is look And as you can see, this ice is actually interesting. It's not falling in the middle for some reason. I'm surprised about that. That might be to do with um, an update to Serene Seasons. I'm not 100% sure. But it does seem to extend out far too far, the ice, as it has been doing. But maybe it's, maybe it's been fixed now. So this boat will come along here. Now what I need to do is to change this one, of course, and put the other one in its place. And I think I've got a spare one with me like that the boat's coming now so let's just break this one here and put down the other one like that so that's as you can see that's now connecting this redstone here now one of the funny things in here forget to right place at the right time is you'll see the boat goes like this i can't get out of the water and though it does actually work this today so now it's got stopped on here now what happens is sometimes the boat gets caught on this post or the back boat does and stays there and then as it goes out it springs around and goes all the way out but um i'm not sure whether that's been fixed as well but see now the boat's been loaded up with a couple of so there you go there was an example of it getting caught on something anyway it looks to be okay so let's go back now and have a look at some of the stuff that's changed to magnetic craft because magnetic craft had sort of stopped being developed and ha now has been so i'll see you back at base actually i haven't shown you something else as well you see this drone here the sole job of this drone is to keep the snow free on the, from the top of these four mirrors if the snow comes over here it will actually stop working um <clears throat> It just has to be one anything on top of it just prevents it from working and snow is one of those things so the sole job of this drone is to remove the snow from the top of these so that will then keep the um, the solar tower working like this we look at this you see it's got full power and it's working as well with some distilled water now the distilled water is we had to look at this before is actually coming from here and out of this side we get lots of salt uh, as you can see at the moment we've got two thousand and 637 salt in here with a void upgrade so as that goes along salt gets produced and gets dumped into there so you've always got salt some butterflies from forestry now the magnetic craft stuff i've got in a backpack i've got the backpack on me i'm not sure to be honest with you no i don't think i have it's actually run out of space let me just turn my jetpack off again I run out of space there. Magnetic craft least <laughs> needs quite a lot of space, and so does, for that matter, uh, in immersive engineering and immersive tech. So here we got two new st two new multi blocks, a big steam boiler, and a steam turbine. Uh, unfortunately, there's a slight they've fixed some things, and they've actually introduced another bug. So let's just take the stuff out of here. So let's assemble first of all the big steam boiler. So we need these items out of there. And this is just a water generator to feed the steam boiler with some water. Now let's put it down. I think I need a bit of space for this. I'm just wondering where's a good place to put it. Maybe over here. For the time being anyway, until we figure out until I figure out a better place to put it. So we'll put this down here and you say it says what it says you it's expecting a machine block. Now there's two different types well there's actually three different types of machine blocks in magnetic craft. This one, a corrugated iron machine block and a machine block. And what he's not doing at the moment is distinguishing between the different types. 
So let's have a look. Let's put these all of these here as you can see are machine machine blocks. When I put that one down here, it says it's now expecting a machine block, but in fact it's actually expecting a corrugated iron machine block. So that makes life a little bit difficult to assemble these things. It's not des desperately difficult, but it's just a little bit more tricky than it was. So let's just put those there, because before it used to tell you what he's expecting in the correct in the correct way. We need 27 of these corrugated iron machine blocks like that. So it's a four height by three by three structure like that. And when you when you get it right, of course, you just everything all the text disappears and we can right click that and this forms a um, successfully activated steam boiler and what this is doing it's going to produce it's going to take water and power heat I guess and it's going to output from there some um, steam so it's going to take water and it's going to output steam I think is and this is where the rate it's outputting at. and I guess the steam's going to come out the top I haven't tried it yet so let's so let's feed it with some um, water first of all, that's what the water generator is for. You put it anywhere you like. I've put it last time, I put it in the middle here. Let's see if that works. Yes, it does. So any adjacent blocks is going to be filling this up with water. Uh, while it's night, I'll have a quick sleep and come back in a second. Now let's have a look in here. What have we got here? I've got a steam turbine recipe. Now this is a new one. I haven't seen this before either. So let's have a look at assembling this. I want to assemble it just every bit. It's a bit of an awkward place because I keep falling off the edge, but I'll try. So I think that if I install, yes, here's a good place. Let's just stick it here. So you can see it lays it down. And we have the same problem as last time, is it doesn't tell you which blocks, but I've got everything I need in here. So I've got 25, um, let's have a look at these, iron grates, 11 machine blocks, and three corrugated iron machine blocks, and a copper coil machine block. Actually, that's four different types, isn't it? And some small tanks. So let's put these down. As you can see, you can just about make out where they should go because of the pictures. But of course, reading the text no longer helps. So let's put those down like this. In fact, it's pro I'm not sure where the best place to stand to do this is, to be honest with you. Let's try over here. Because <clears throat> then you can see fairly easily where things go to. Uh, unfortunately, I'm right at the edge of this, which is a bit of a mistake really with the matter. So that'll be a normal machine block, this will be a corrugated uh, iron grate machine block and a normal machine block. So then the next layer. So you, you get to the right position you can see what you need. So let's put that one down there. That is I think, that's where it gets a little bit hard, I think that's just a standard machine block. It'll tell me if I get it wrong. In fact, it's saying small tank. And the reason it's saying small tank is because it's going from starting at this point and going down this row. Oh, we can carry on. Let's, we'll actually do that, shall we? So small tank, and then it says again, it's going to say small tank again. Hard to see, I know, but when you're too close, you can't see it. So now it needs a machine block. So have a look, which one do we want? So this looks like a standard machine block. It is also quite difficult to see something stand up on here. Yeah, it looks like a standard machine block <clears throat> like that. And then this one's clearly a corrugated, uh, a corrugated iron one like that. And therefore, that's going to be corrugated iron. Now you can see in the middle here, you've got these. Um, sorry, these are the corrugated iron ones, aren't they? Yeah. And the other ones are the iron grate ones. These are the iron grate ones here. That goes on top of that first one of those so we can put that down there like that and then it's going to say what's it saying we want small tanks so it's going to be working from this side now so let's put down these two small tanks and we've got to hit it in the right place or press shift whichever so now it says it wants a machine block so that's the standard machine block and that's a corrugated iron one uh, you can see the reason for this you'll see why in a second Put that down there and that down there and then this one in the middle. And that's just about done. I think all we need now is some we've got two at the other end of this, and then these are just going to be filling in this three by three area here. Not quite, but that was not close, not not bad. So we then just put these two down that that. 
and this time it will disappear the sign so we know it's got the right <coughs> blocks in the right places if you want to have a look at it it looks like that so you've got two tanks down here then you have a, a cross at the end here like this which makes it easier to see and at the back at the back we've also got a if you can you can make that as anything you like so we've got sort of a, a star of machine blocks there as well so right click this and then we see this this machine so let's have a look at it from the side as you can see it's got these two tanks we put in here no big deal and the front actually or the front or the back it's got this great big turbine in it. it's cool isn't it now <laughs> so let's have a look at the give on this thing so we're basically going to see you'll see here we've got production and that's power so this is coming out and this is coming in so i reckon we're getting steam in and that's production in watts which is going out and this is the volts that it's producing so the next thing we've got to do is we need to basically produce steam now somewhere about <laughs> i've lost it i've got the big the big combustion chamber um so i'll go and get that and come back in a few seconds right now i've got the bits for the combustion chamber so look at the recipe for this the recipe for this one is basically just a brick and a piece of paper and this is going to make a combustion chamber which basically just generates heat now this is <coughs> basically four long by three by two i think in height so here we see this is the center block and we've got bricks around it we can put the bricks around here like this I think it's three across, so we'll just throw three across like that. And put the rest on the top of that. Six, and then we need two for the chimney. And that should be it. It's created good. Let's right click this again. If you don't remember what it looks like, it's this device here. So you basically you fill it up with fuel, liquid, uh, solid fuel, and it will produce for your steam. Um, given water, I think. No, it should produce heat actually. So let's. Now I'm not sure how to connect these two into this yet. So I'll come back in a few seconds when I figured out how to connect it up. But these are the outputs from the heat here. Um, so I need some heat pipes. So I'll be back in a second. Right, all I've done is assemble this up. <laughs> I produce pollution now. This machine didn't used to. Um, I'm feeding it with sticks to increase the temperature. A bit slow with sticks, but maybe I put on multiple hoppers on that to actually keep it in speed. But the sticks actually sm smelt one half of an item, whereas the plank does um, one. So as you can see, this is pumping out lots of smoke <laughs> underneath here. Maybe that's why it's coming out of that. And But it is actually feeding this with um, heat like this. So now it's got some steam in here. So what we next have to do is to take the steam out of it. I guess that the way we take the steam out is to put it... Um, so that must be the power exit. Now where do we put the steam into this machine? It's usually sort of semi-obvious. <laughs> yes, so what we can do to find out is just simply put down pipes. So let's put a pipe down here, for example. If it connects like that it looks like it's connecting then we're probably in with a chance of it to actually work so you see it's not it is sort of connecting here but it really isn't i don't think let's just check yeah fluid's empty because i'm pretty sure that the output of this is at the top here now of course i might need to use the wrench in order to connect this together Looks like it wants to connect to that anyway um so there's no fluid going into that yet but maybe we have to use the the wrench to make that make sure that it goes out so i need to go and find the pneumatic craft wrench i think that's in here no <laughs> so magnetic craft wrench no it's not in there either it's the um, red one isn't it we've got it in here no um yes um where have i put it i'll come back in a second when i found it well, I didn't find it, made another one. Let's get up here and then we'll look at this, if we can get this to come out of here. So normally you right click this like that and it changes that into yellow, which means it as an output mode. So have a look, see so if this team's going anywhere. It is indeed going down, look, as you can see. And now that means that this machine's probably getting steam into it. And sure enough it is. 
and it's producing some watts here as you can see it's produced 280 watts thereabouts so it's producing voltage I'm not sure where the voltage is going to normally they don't disappear out of these machines when they they just charge themselves up but maybe this one's different so look at the front end see if the turbine's turning now yeah sure enough the turbine's turning slowly but it is turning so that is then producing some power I'll tell you what we'll do let's just jump up here and put onto this a pipe uh, a connector here where has it gone to or oh, one of these what I'm going to do in fact is not to put anything else let's go and get a, a coil I've made a Tesla coil very cheap recipe for these and what these things do is this thing here Tesla tower recipe for this it's basically fine couple of coils, one two iron ingots and a plate. You know, I'll have to look at the plates in a second as well because they become twice as expensive or potentially twice as expensive. So let's go over here and let's put this Tesla coil on tower onto this if I can reach it. Come on from that. Let's, let's go over here like that. Let's see if we click it on. Yeah. Now this should receive some power. Now what that's going to do is to going to charge up the items that you've got in your inventory. Uh, if you've got a chargeable item, uh, unfortunately at the moment I haven't. I've got a battery. Let's go and get a battery out of here. I think there's a battery in this pack over here. But that small battery is already charged up. Let's go and make another one. I'm not sure if this will charge up with the um, aerial interface. So let's see if we can make a small battery quickly. That's okay. We're we missing everything. So let. Iron nuggets, copper nuggets, and some sulfur dust. Sulfur dust, I have been getting some sulfur dust from various places. I got 41, so we need two of those. Um, silver nuggets, and it was a copper nugget as well. Uh, and the other ones were iron plates and iron nuggets. Unfortunately, the workbench doesn't work in the way that I'd like it to for this. But I could do my small battery now. Let's make a small battery. Take that out of here. Now, yeah, that's charging up, which is a bit of a shame. Um, let me go put that away here somewhere. So put it charges up completely. It was actually charging up quite fast. I think that's because of the aerial interface. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to knock the power off the aerial interface for a second. Here. And it's fully charged with power. And it's probably got more power than it needs to have. Let's just take it off anyway. Now, with a bit of luck, the aerial interface will go down. Now, what can I use to charge up quickly? I don't think it works with um, immersive engine capacitors, because that would be nice if it did, because it doesn't charge these up. That one's fully charged anyway. So that's not charging. I'm just thinking what we can actually put, what I can quickly either make or use to charge something up quickly. But anyway, it's supposed to charge up things in my inventory if we're mid-2021 block away. So let's see if we take this out of here now. Because it's probably charging up as, just as quickly. Let's have a look at this over here. Can we see this? Yep. Yeah. That says it's fully charged up like this. And of course my battery is now fully charged up. Let's see if the aerial interface was actually charging that up. I think it is. But the Tesla coil, the Tesla tower is supposed to do the same thing. Yeah, it's it's emptied it out. I reckon it was the aerial interface that's charging it up. But that's supposed to work. I haven't tested it fully, as you can see. But another thing is the RF transformer. This is also a new item from here, and this is actually neat. So basically, it's these double plates. Now, if you look at the recipe for double plates, so it's two iron ingots and a hammer, a stone hammer, in the crafting recipe. Or, of course, you can do it on the crushing table, um, which a block will produce five, which is actually not that efficient. That's slightly better than the two, because that would give you normally that would be ten for for five, wouldn't it? But the best one's a hydraulic press, so it's one for one. So on the hydraulic press, so it makes it sense to actually produce a, um, a hydraulic press to make these plates for magnetic craft now. 
Before it didn't make sense because they were as quick, equally as cheap. This is automated. So we just put an ingot in here and out the back side will come uh, an ingot of things. Let's go, I've got some ingots in here anyway. So for example, let's take a copper piece. Four. Let's put four in here. Because we always need copper plates too. It bangs down and out the back will come four copper plates in a few seconds. Yep. So it's still working. Still got another plate. And you select this mo mode here. The heavy mode has got no use except to create something you can smelt. <laughs> and this one is for the um, producing blocks. So, for example, this produces um, blocks of packed ice. So there's our four. So we didn't lose that. We actually check the recipe again because I looked at it last time. Was this one wasn't it? Crushing table five and this one and then you can use it for basically smelt it copper so that makes a lot of sense to make those machines nowadays let's have a look now the next thing was this I haven't looked at this yet, yet but this is neat let's kind of look at this uh, it's another power producer from where we can actually convert power between RF or FE power as it is nowadays uh, into ordinary uh, I'll put it down here for example let's put it down here it's a magnetic craft power so that basically means you don't need these huge systems to produce power and it's it's not too bad as it happens let's put down the connector here and then let's take I should have put these into my offhand here and then right click right click that you see there's nothing in it at the moment and then right click this and then that'll start charging up as you can see so it's getting voltage it's now producing that's its RF storage and that's the volts as you can see so it's got 120 volts which is max for this and then you can connect this to another device so for example I could connect this to uh, the battery box here for example that's already got power in it but like that oh of course I can do this couldn't I we can discharge this battery I think that's the charging one. No, if it wasn't full of power, I could discharge it, <laughs> but I can't discharge it at the moment. So you can connect this from any side, I think. It all looks the same from all the faces here. Let's just put down a block here. You'll see that connects in, which basically means it's it will output power onto that. So that's nice. Now that big nasty. Um, I'll come back in a second because it's. You have a look at all of these they're all f they're all flat yes so he's fixed this again in the first version of this pack these work nicely uh, and the, the mirrors actually rotated according to the Sun so let's quickly have a quick sleep and come back in this right here we are it's actually well four hours later it's daytime and you can see that I've got some of these solar panels which are activated the other ones aren't working because it makes too much heat for the, the users in producing at the moment so we've got seven of those and each one of those will produce 50, um, eight, 8 watts of power so that gives me uh, 56 if you look in here you'll see that it says we've got 56 watts of power being produced and that's the heat now the heat in this case is going to the um, to these steam boilers here it's also going to the refinery at the back here as well so this is also needs heat as you can see this the heat matches that and then produces hot crude from uh, oil quite a process that one was and I reckon the same is true for this it would be much nicer to use not the big combustion chamber that's just a cheap way of getting a build compared to the amount of effort they have to you have to do to produce those mirrors to get the uh, solar panel where have they gone to <laughs> can't see them um, so that's a, another nice change and the other thing is we'll have a look up here first of next let's put my jet pack on just go up here i haven't got builders mode on it which is a bit a look in this you'll see this has actually got an increased it's got wind speed now that what well, didn't exist before now from what i remember so we now got wind clearance we see that and, and the production so you can actually tell you how much it, what it's producing so it's not producing that much power but it produces a little bit 
as you can see it's probably there for the maximum this probably could be around about three watts compared to a solar panel that's uh, fairly negligible so i'll jet back off anyway that's it for this episode i hope you've enjoyed it it's been I'm really pleased that Magnetic has uh, not been stopped its development. It's lots of fun, that mod, uh, but it does need a lot of space, and I haven't got it at the moment. Anyway, hopefully, I'm, I said last time was the end of the series. I'm still thinking about it being the end of the series. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing next. So until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.